I'm Ali Schenken. I'm at the uh, Ecosystems Group here. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about the work we're doing in tropical ecosystems to understand forest function, structure, and uh, how we use some new tools to shed light on some old questions. Traditionally, we've uh, measured forest structure by getting on the ground and using tape measures or clinometers to measure the size of trees, the heights of trees. And we've come up with uh, graphs to understand how these uh, forest structures change across ecosystems. Or if we want more of a gestalt view of the forest, we'll draw uh, forest profile diagrams to understand how forests look. Um, and these are quite valuable um, to uh, really get a sense of how these forests work. Um, but so even though this is recent, technology has moved on um, and uh, new technology ends up providing, I guess these ones didn't get changed, ends up providing a very nice complement to these more traditional tools. So what you see here um, is an instrument that's shooting lasers and uh, it shoots lasers down. This is called a LIDAR, it shoots lasers and this, these are literally lasers in the jungle. Uh, you get a pulse back and so you know how distant an object is by measuring the time of return of your laser. Um, so this is just on the ground. You can imagine with vegetation, uh, as the laser goes through, you get various returns as a, as a laser goes through a tree and you get a sense of where the vegetation is along this line. And you can imagine if you do this millions and millions of times, you'll end up with a 3D picture of a forest, which I'll show you in a little bit. We team up with Greg Asner and the Carnegie Airborne Observatory to, for our airborne LIDAR uh, systems. And um, he has a, a LIDAR along with some hyperspectral uh, instruments in here. Um, and we've also teamed up with a group of researchers at Wageningen University. I worked on that pronunciation. Uh, and <laughs> this operates on the same principle as uh, the airborne LIDAR, except that it's terrestrial. It's, on the ground and this thing spins around, shoots lasers around millions of times, gives a much better sense of, of what the understory of a forest looks like. So um, this is our laboratory. Uh, this is the Cosnipata Valley from the cloud forests in Peru all the way down to the lowland of the Amazon. I'm gonna take you on a brief tour of these plots. This is our first one called Waikecha. And we're flying in, this is terrestrial LIDAR data. And we fly in and you can see that these crowns are maybe 18 meters tall. Um, you get a sense as you see this blue underneath that you actually have quite rich data that come from these forests. If we go around the corner to our next plot in Esperanza, the forest is a bit taller. You have uh, 25 meter trees and you really uh, ha have this sense of topography. You can see where the trees are positioned. You can see how the crowns are positioned relative to each other. This is data that's been difficult to measure in the past and very uh, laborious. Now we're moving down into the lowlands. Um, and this is a plot in Tambopata. We're gonna fly in along the river here. And we're gonna take a look at the forest uh, from a side view. And again, you can get a sense of, this is a much taller forest, about 35 meters. You can get a sense of the density of information here and how much we can do with it. But also it might be difficult to parse apart all these point clouds and figure out what is actually happening in kind of this mess of points. So here's another plot right down the road from the one we just saw. And I'm gonna highlight some uh, work that our uh, colleague Alvaro Sarmiento has been doing at Wageningen which is you go in and you can isolate a particular tree and you cut that out from the point cloud and it actually is just this really rich source of information. And you can really see individual branches, the lengths of these branches, the width of these branches. <clears throat> you can imagine what kind of uh, carbon measurements you could do on this when you really have a, a fuller sense of the volume of this, uh, of all the woody parts of the tree. You can see where the leaves are um, for the most part. And you can see um, just very detailed information that you would have to climb a tree 
uh, to really get in the past. And now you can do it from the comfort of your desktop. Um, it's not, of course, a replacement for being in the forest. You lose. It, it's important to be there to have to gain ecological insight to understand what's happening in these forests. But this is really just a, a rich source of information that that um, uh, we can use to uh, make conclusions about branch architecture and uh, lots of of these questions that have been kind of intransigent in the past. We can also get these digital elevation models. So this is just the, of the same plot, uh, an uh, image of the ground. And you can see there's a river that goes through the plot. So now we can have um, a sense of the context of these forests, where these species are placed within the plot, um, how, how these species sort out uh, in the hydro hydrological regime of these forests, sorry, of, of these uh, topographies. For the individual trees, um, going back to that, again, this is Alvaro's work. We, you can look at a topology of the tree, how all these uh, branches are connected. You can start asking physiological questions like Nico Rab here is asking. If you connect all these nodes um, and you look at where the sources of photosynthate are and where they might go, you can start doing some functional analyses of these trees in very detailed ways that were difficult in the past. Other things that we can do is use um, light measurements and other measurements of the environment to uh, <coughs> produce m uh, uh, much better constrained models of light throughout these uh, uh, forest plots. So as we measure vertical light profiles, we can couple that with these LIDAR point clouds and understand how light and structure are interacting in these forests. And have a better idea how uh, these things might interact in a changing world. Finally, this is data not from our plots, but this is from Greg Asner's Carnegie um, uh, missions. You can marry not just structure, but with, you can marry it with function. So these, these different colors indicate different chemical compositions of these canopies. And you can look at how these trees are sorting themselves uh, and how not just these forests are structured, but how they're functioning and these trees, how, how they can coexist together. So that's it. Um, acknowledgements to lots of the folks from Wageningen, uh, Greg Asner, uh, the field team, and uh, various folks from Oxford. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>